Ireland is epic. For landscape photography, it is a gold mine. I finally got to photograph it and oh boy, did Ireland deliver. However, not in the way I expected. If you love landscape photography, this video is for you because the photos we take and places we visit only get more and more epic. Also, a big thanks to MPB for sponsoring this video. More on them later. On this journey, I was joined by my friends, co-photographers and YouTubers, Nigel Danson, Michael Sheenblom, who I consider to be one of the best landscape photographers in the world, the local Darren J. Spoonley and Rick Babington. Rick was there to help Nigel make his videos. Definitely check out all their channels if you haven't already. But before we get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the gear I used on this landscape photography trip. And of course, a big thanks to MPB for sponsoring this video. So first off, I used my Sony a7R5 as the main camera. I don't want to go into details with all the gear I'm showing here because I've already done that in separate videos. However, you can buy this camera off mpb.com because it's a platform where you can buy and sell used camera gear. And it works in both US, the UK and continental Europe. And you can see I've also attached an L bracket to the a7R5. This here is the one from Smallrig where it opens up here in the side so I can access the side part of the camera right here. I gotta admit I'm actually quite surprised about how solid this section of the L bracket is because it's not a solid piece of iron. So, so far, so good, it works fine. So I also used the Sony 16 to 35 millimeter F4 P set lens. I love this little lens. It's super compact, lightweight, and it is very, very sharp. And it's also available on mpb.com. When you use MPB for selling your gear, they'll give you a quote for the piece of gear you want to sell. And if it is in better conditions, they'll give you an updated quote once they've expected it. MPB also takes care of postage and shipping for you. So it's super easy. For all medium and telephoto photos, I use the Tamron 50 to 400 millimeter lens. And there are also a few of those available on mpb.com. I do have a link down in the description of this video that I would highly appreciate that you use if you want to buy or sell used camera gear, because in that way MPB can see I'm worth sponsoring. So although it is ridiculously expensive, I did go ahead and get the official lens color for the Tamron lenses. It simply just makes your entire camera setup much more stable. So since we were photographing a lot around the sea, I was also using the magnetic filter system from Freewell. Super easy to use, especially if you have step up rings. In that way, you can use the same filters for several different lenses. And last but not least, I used my DJI Mavic 3 Pro with the three lenses here in front. I'll talk a little bit about how to improve the image quality of especially the seven times zoom later in this video. It is because of sponsors like MPB that I can make basically only one video from an entire journey to a foreign country for landscape photography, which from a monetary perspective makes absolutely zero sense. But I do believe it ups the quality of the video tremendously. So please use the link down in the description of this video so MPB can see I'm worth sponsoring. So without further ado, let's get to it. So we've come here to Dunmore Head and it is quite windy. After all, it is Ireland. And whoa, do we have epic conditions. So we're photographing out here in the background. It's the first time I'm using this mic right here. So hopefully there's not too much wind noise. Honestly, I, I, have, I have no clue. But this place is just full of these super spiky cliffs that is just like, it looks like they've been forced out of the ground and they work perfectly as a foreground for a wide angle photo. So I have set up the camera here, found myself a composition, and there's so many compositions to have right here. And then photographing out here, having these small islands here, and this island here, and epic light as the backdrop. So when I'm thinking about the composition here, I'm really trying to make like an S-curve composition where I use the cliffs here in the foreground that leads into the background here behind me and then up here to the islands. So there are so many opportunities for these compositions in these rocks and I'm not going to cover all of them. So I'm not sure this will be my final composition. Probably not. <laughs> so you will have to see whatever I come up with 
afterwards. Hi. <laughs> how, how do you like this? It's nice. It's, uh, you know, I was expecting Ireland to be a little colder and a little windier, but I'm just, you know, I think it's, I could go for a swim right now. It's really nice. <laughs> so that's what, you know, we're just doing a little bit of landscape photography, real peaceful. Real lovely. Awesome. So we have come quite a lot further into the scene than where I was just before. And as you can see here, much closer to the water. I may see if I can crawl down there and if it makes sense, but I found a composition right here that I think works really, really well. We start seeing this island here being a little bit more pointy. And then I'm using the foreground cliffs here, actually from these very jaggy cliffs here, all the way into this scene here. And then with a little bit of the glow there from the sunset. And I feel I've been shooting quite a lot with the long lens. I'm probably going to shoot with the long lens too here, but it's nice to be in this super epic conditions where the cliffs are just like inviting for that kind of like wide angle landscape photography. So it is morning, it was a little bit hard yesterday evening to figure out where we wanted to go for sunrise because Dingle, the area here, it is very much a sunset area, not so much sunrise. So we decided to just come back because we wanted to fulfill a few different criteria. We wanted good light, which was the hard part. Then we wanted big waves because there's kind of a lot of wind and a big swell here. And we also wanted like an epic location. So we basically just ended up coming back to the same place as we were yesterday. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure uh, that that would work. It doesn't, for me at least. <laughs> Probably does for Michael, he's way better than I am. And Nigel, he's recording some kind of other video. The, the thing is like, oh, <laughs> all the good light is like that way. We have beautiful clouds and beautiful colors, but a lot of what's actually worth photographing is in this direction behind this hill, what we photographed last night. And uh, yeah, I don't really think that I can make it down to the sea here. I don't know the location, uh, so uh, <laughs> it's one of those, one of those mornings where I don't really feel it. And I usually don't really show those mornings on YouTube because I want to show like my work, not, not my, I won't call it a failure. It's just that it's one of those times you go out and eh, it doesn't really work out. Uh, but it does happen also for me. Uh, yeah, I'll walk a bit around. Maybe I'll find something. But right now it's one of those mornings where you don't really feel it. And that also happens, it's fine, it's fine. I, I, I didn't expect it to work, so I'm not disappointed. It's just like when you see the ingredients are there, but they're not like coming together. It's a bit like, nah. Oh well. So Mas just said he was a little bit uninspired by this, but I actually think that last night we came and there was backlight um, and, and, and we were shooting directly into the light and it was really spectacular in the distance but we didn't get any light on the foreground and i think when you've got light like that light on the foreground is really important and the, also this morning it's very soft it's very sort of subtle and i really like that and i really like the light that we're just getting on some of the cliffs out here so i'd say on balance even though yesterday was 
more dramatic, I'd say this is probably, so far, I prefer a little bit more. But, like Mas said, just said to me, it depends what the edit turns out like. So yeah, there's definitely no doubt about that I prefer the more dramatic light. And that's just the thing, like some would say it's super wrong to compare your photos to what you got. Of course we all compare our photos to what we got earlier. And I just know in my mind and with my pre-visualization of the photos that what I got last night was way better than anything I can get this morning. So that's generally why I'm a little bit uninspired. I, I will see if I can, I can get something different, something else. That's also a good thing, like it inspires me to do something else, but the same shots as I got last night, definitely better than anything I can get this morning. But yeah, generally, it's good. Like, you know, we're different photographers, so we get different results. And that is, uh, that's just a good thing. So when everything else fails, fly the drone. I think it worked, I'm not sure. So by now I've come a little bit further down close to the sea. I do still think that this would work best in my opinion for a sunset shot with the sun setting here in the background and then we get some amazing clouds above. But right now I put on the 10 stop filter, blue sky shots, long exposure. It can't go entirely wrong. Now I am also going to use the long lens to focus stack some of the cliffs here in the background. I think they are dramatic enough to warrant a long lens shot with some uh, long exposure around it. That ought to look pretty cool too. So this is one of those photos where you are like, yeah, okay, it's fine. Not the best in the world, but fine. I do like the composition with the lines coming out from the lower corners of the photo and then the layers lead into the background. And especially the triangular C stack takes up a lot of attention. So optimally, I would have preferred different lighting. And that is what we got in the last session you will see in this video. So be sure to hang around for that. If you want to learn more about composition, be sure to get my ebook on exactly that topic. It is in this ebook where I, in a minimal way, with minimal text and loads of photo examples, show my approach to composition in landscape photography. I cover focal points, subjects, depth, visual flow, balance, scale, the direction of your subjects, and much, much, much more. And if you want to learn even more, be sure to get my second ebook. There are links to both of them down in the description of the video. Holy moly, what a hike up here. It's not so much the hike, it's just the relentless wind. It's just terrible. <laughs> it's really one of the stronger winds I've like been hiking in. So uh, yeah, I've just been like the past 20, 30 minutes getting accustomed to this place. So I'm in this old 
board-ish thing and I actually had my main idea was to photograph in this direction here because obviously the view is beautiful and there's island out there and there's like an island here that you can't really see but it is there and then the idea was to stand like on this cliff here but that is not going to happen in these winds i want to be safe and sound and not die so what i have been doing instead is to walk through here put up the camera right there and then i've been shooting in the opposite direction towards these mountains here that are called the three sisters and of course I have myself standing here so i put it on the intervalometer and just like f13 iso 100 gives me a fast enough shutter speed these conditions here it's not too bad photographing from within the fort here but if i just like move over here to the window it's like yeah. you can hear it on the sound that there is a lot of wind but i think the photo in that direction was actually really good. I'll stay here and see if I can find some other compositions that may work in that direction. Now another thing is also in regard to safety because the rest of the group they wanted to stay down by the ocean and photograph the waves. Don't blame them but I really wanted to come up here because I just like these very epic views and vistas but when I'm on my own I really don't want to push it too much because if something happens like there's nobody to help me uh, so I really really want to stay safe obviously I don't have a death wish and uh, you need to take that into consideration when you do landscape photography in extreme conditions like this wind definitely is <laughs> I've just come outside of the little fort and I think I found a composition that may actually work from out here where I can put myself in the foreground. So I am photographing in this direction here and you can see epic light, epic clouds and from time to time the light comes out and lights up the foreground and then I put myself right here. Now it looks a little bit sketchy but I don't think it is. Uh, it is quite a big cliff and it's not going to fall over. So I just put on the intervalometer, walk into the scene and let the camera do whatever it does. F13, ISO 100 and a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second. And that's fast enough for me to get a sharp photo. <laughs> I've been waiting for what feels like forever up here and just shooting out of this window. I'm shooting out here and I want light on the foreground. The sun is up here. But it seems as if every single cloud in Ireland is being created over this island. And then they go like this way and cover up the sun all the time. So uh, yeah, I may just have to wait and wait and wait because I don't think there's any chance that the sun will come down and light this up because there's just too many clouds right there. So that is also how landscape photography is. So as you can see the light did come out and it yet again just goes to show that yes you need a strong composition but with bad lighting it won't really work and if you have good light you still need a really good composition so they kind of go hand in hand.
So how was that for a reveal of a beautiful location? We've come up to the top of a mountain here and as you could see on the drone footage, wow, does it look cool. <laughs> it's especially like that background line of mountains, the coastline. There's just so much depth and separation in those layers between the mountains. They're actually called the Three Sisters. And then in the background we have an island that I don't remember or know the name of. So we came up here on top of the mountain and there's still some hours before sunset. So I'm going to explore a little bit more around here. I have seen a few different spots that I wanted to photograph. So far I've filmed with the drone and photographed with the drone. And you can see those photos here. Yeah, so, I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. It's definitely one of the most impressive places I've ever been. And we've been here for <laughs> how long? Maybe an hour or two. I have not pulled out the camera yet. And uh, I think, you know, sometimes, especially to try and inspire myself, I kind of like to just enjoy the, the area and, and really just kind of soak it in and or maybe a little bit of is of it is me like having trouble turning on my photography brain but uh i mean when you're in a place like this it's it's easy to just kind of look at stuff for hours and <laughs> every once in a while maybe i for, forget to take a picture that could be a good or a bad thing but either way it's it's absolutely amazing up here so i think about an hour or so has passed by and we're basically just waiting for the light to become better because as you just saw on the photo, it is, it is quite harsh. We'll just wait for that to change, but right now I have actually found a composition that I think works where I can get both greens and blues in there with the still quite neutral light. So I am photographing in this direction here and I have zoomed in to something like this here. So me being me, I'll go and stand here to create a little bit more foreground interest and then we have the layers and there's actually even an island there in the background. I'm of course also putting it on the intervalometer, waiting for one minute before it starts photographing with an interval of seven seconds. As you could see, F13, that makes sense that I have everything in focus from the front layer and all the way into the background. So I've come a little bit further forward, but what has happened is that clouds, big clouds have moved in. We kind of expected that to happen. I am just a little bit unsure whether we get a chance for some more light. It looks like it. We do have sunbeams out there. So if the sun is in the right angle, we should be able to get light on that ridge line, which is really cool because when you get that backlit or sidelit, then you can really see all that sea mist, that sea spray, and it helps with the separation through the scene. So, uh, but yeah, right now oh, I'm contemplating, should I try to get something down here or should I go back up? And because I don't think I'll have a whole lot more chances to get a shot. So I will have to like, you know, dedicate myself to one and get whatever happens. So Darren, a few thoughts on uh, what's going on now? It is certainly a challenge. Um, the light that was there is now gone. I'm not here. Hang on. It's certainly a challenge. The light that was there is now gone, but it is helping because we're getting some nice rays that are coming down here 
I am a bit concerned in relation to the amount of clouds and are we going to have it that it's going to light it up. If it does, it will be, as you call it, epic. Yes, yes. exactly. That, that's the thing. Yeah. It can go both ways right now. But uh, but yeah, I, I, I've come down lower as well because I hope that there's a nice composition down here. But yeah, I don't know. There might not be. So I have found myself a little ledge here, a little ridge where I can sit and just enjoy the view but also take a photograph where I'm actually not in the scene. So I put on the 50 to 400 millimeter. Actually, I've had it on all the time, but at 50 millimeter, I can include this scene right here with the sea stacks, the background, these sea stacks, and this very jacked ridge line right here. And then I've also put on a 10 stop filter and that gives me the settings f14 iso 50 and then i can increase it right now to 25 seconds but i can also like push it a bit more to like 30 seconds and i'll still have a exposure where i expose to the right so i expose for the highlights and then i just raise the shadows afterwards but it looks something like this here where i really like smooth out the water However, I will wait a bit and hopefully there will be a little bit more interesting light. It looks as if some light is coming, so I'll wait for that. So this year is just turning into one of those frantic situations where I'm just trying to do everything at once. So down here behind me, the photo you have just seen is actually a photo I have time-lapsed. So the camera is just doing whatever it's doing and I've run back up here where I got the first drone photos and I'm going to fly the drone again and photograph myself up here in the foreground and then have the epic mountains here behind me when the light is a little bit more golden. So hopefully I get something different from the first version of this photo you saw earlier. Here's some more drone stuff. So a decent amount of editing actually went into finishing this photo. The thing is that it's taken with the DJI Mavic 3 Pro with the 7x zoom. And admittedly, the image quality of those photos are not too good. So I stacked the photo from a burst mode. So I took like five or seven photos and then put them all on top of each other to smooth out the noise. And then I also clean it up with some noise reduction and sharpening tools and of course added some contrast to make it pop. If you want to learn how I edit all my photos, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course. It is here where you learn all my different editing techniques, everything from cleaning the photos for noise or distracting elements as you could also see in that photo because I removed the two walls from the fortress. It is here where you learn focus stacking, time blending, focal length blending, blending with luminosity masks and editing with luminosity masks and so, so much more. There is a discount code down in the description of the video where you can get $45 off. So this evening here was literally the calm before the storm because on our last day in Ireland, Storm Agnes hit us and yeah, just see here. So, Storm Agnes is hitting Ireland and actually right now we are quite sheltered from the wind 
but we get a massive swell that is just hitting the coastline. Right now we are photographing along here towards this sea stack that is called the Devil's Horns. And well, it's kind of self-explanatory why. I am photographing in manual mode for once. F10, 11, 13, dependent on the amount of light in the scene, ISO 100, and then a fairly fast shutter speed. The reason for the fast shutter speed is to be able to capture the moment Optimally, I may want to shoot a little bit faster, but I've zoomed in to my photos and I can see that it is quite sharp. Now with this C-Stack, what I'm trying to do is to basically just capture it when something interesting happens, either in the background, foreground, next to it. I really have this idea about like a big wave crashing next to it. It is immensely hard to capture any kind of scale in this photo. There's no where to place a human being or a car or a house, anything like that. But uh, yeah, well, that is also part of photography. It's not always completely optimal, but the conditions are, wow, these waves are just insane, spectacular. It's one of those compositions that are so hectic and feels so random because you basically just have to stand and wait and wait and wait, and then suddenly everything just comes together. Light, waves, yeah. What do you say, Nigel? Oh, it's just amazing. We just need some light, don't we? We do, we do from time to time. Get a little bit, but yeah. it's, it's teasing so us. It's so good. It's out there, <laughs> we can see it. Sunbeams and all that stuff, just not in the perfect oh, place. Oh. <laughs> so, Another thing is, of course, also to remember to keep your front element clean. So I keep wiping it and wiping it and while there, I miss the wave. It's okay. Like The thing is, sometimes the waves come and like hit the devil's horn, like just overtakes it. And that's kind of not really what I want because I, that is my focal point. That is the C stack. I want something next to it that's big and epic. I don't want the waves to be completely on top of it. Oh, here comes a big one again. Alrighty, here's a photo or two. So I really do enjoy being out here in the elements. Just look at the scene here, like massive waves, so much mood. Rain coming in from time to time, and then hopefully also a little bit of light at some point. We come down here to Dunmore Head, like the outer cliffs, and <laughs> oh, just feeling the elements, absolutely. It kind of like, you know, humbles you a little bit because if I make one wrong move here, I'm just done. So obviously I'm not going to do that, but I really do enjoy being out in weather like this. So I've come a little bit further down and <laughs> I am just enjoying the show here. These waves here behind me are just absolutely massive. I'm actually photographing a little bit towards back here, towards these cliffs, because when the waves come and hit them, and on the way back, they actually create some quite nice streaks that I can capture with a three-stop filter and a long exposure here at like half a second. You can actually see them down here, those, those streaks are there. Ooh. Ah, some waves, but I'm not entirely sure I actually need to catch it with a long exposure. At the same time, I also sometimes have the waves crashing up on the backside of the cliffs, which creates a lot of separation throughout the scene. It looks 
epic. Now, I was contemplating whether I should go down and stand here on the edge, but I have seen some waves come up there, so nope. And that is just so important around seascape and wave photography. You have to wait for like half an hour, 45 minutes at least, before you determine how close you get to the water. Because especially on a day like this, one wave will just suck you out to sea and it's bye-bye. So, uh, yep, nope. But yeah, I've just uh, been photographing here, taken about like two, three hundred photos already. And hopefully I'll be able to find one that works. If not, I'll make some kind of time blend. After I got this photo, I headed over to the main view, but the wind was simply just way too strong to make any kind of vlogging, and I had to keep a hand on my retracted tripod all the time while sitting down as to not getting pushed around by the wind. As you can see, Nigel and Darren was here. It's a little bit funny. For the briefest of moments, the light did come out and lit up the scene, and it was just absolutely epic. Although we stayed in a relatively small area of Ireland and the photos were way more epic than I had imagined before going, Ireland definitely did not disappoint. It is not the last time I came here. Again, thanks to mpb.com for sponsoring this video. Please make sure to use the link for them in the description if you want to buy or sell some gear and check out the links to my ebooks if you want to learn even more and of course also enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers editing course. See you next time.